Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com, here to bring you video number five in my series on ancestor veneration coming from a universalist perspective and designed to offer you all of the tools needed to develop your relationship with your ancestors from scratch. If you haven't seen videos one through four, please go back and look over that foundational information. Here in video number five, I'm going to be discussing moving forward in your relationship with your ancestors. So how do you know when to move forward in your relationship with your ancestors? The simple answer is that you're going to receive signs, you're going to receive messages, you're going to receive guidance. Your ancestors are going to come to you in whatever way works the best for you, in whatever way that your intuition is strongest or your psychic gifts are strongest or your spiritual connection is the strongest. The most frequent occurrence is your ancestors coming to you in your dreams. Um, this is very common for a lot of people. However, there are many other ways that your ancestors can come to you depending on how things work for you as an individual. So the idea is as you are developing this practice, as you are developing this connection, you're also developing your own spiritual practice. You're also developing your own spiritual connection. So through this practice, it is one way that you're also going to strengthen your intuition that you're also going to strengthen your spiritual connection and with that comes more awareness of yourself more awareness of how your messages come to you more awareness of how your intuition works more thoughtful awareness throughout your daily life and that's going to help you in receiving the signs messages and guidance that your ancestors will send to you sometimes that's going to be something very clear very apparent very powerful like a strong dream that feels very real where they sit down with you and they say i'm here and i'm going to help you now right for example Sometimes it's going to be more subtle. So for instance, as you are speaking to your ancestors on a daily or weekly basis, talking to them about your life, telling them about your challenges, your goals, and so forth, you may come to realize eventually that they are helping you with those things. They may be bringing you the guidance or the insight that you need to traverse your obstacles or achieve your goals or break through your challenges, right? You can receive that insight when you're actually sitting quietly at your ancestor altar or you could be receiving that insight throughout your daily life or you could be receiving it in signs in the world around you. Whatever the case may be, it's important for you to be aware and to be in tune so you recognize and you actually take notice of these signs, these messages, this guidance that is going to come to you. Once you notice that that has come to you at least three times or when it's coming to you consistently throughout your life or you've received some very significant signs, significant interactions or significant messages, that's when you know it's time to move that relationship forward. And you will know, you will know intuitively, you will feel that something has shifted in the relationship. You'll feel very palpably that something has shifted in the connection and you'll know when it's time to move it forward. So moving it forward can look a lot of different ways depending upon what's comfortable for you, but most prominently, um, one of the easiest ways to move this relationship forward is to increase the offerings. So for instance, if a specific ancestor has made themselves known to you, such as in your dreams, you can then begin to offer that ancestor the specific things that they um, liked when they were alive or the specific things that they are now requesting from you. You can begin to make individual offerings to that specific ancestor. 
you could put up a picture of that specific ancestor and you can consider that that specific ancestor is now one of your primary ancestors, one of your primary guides. So you would want to begin to honor them and to revere them in your daily practices along with your ancestors as a group or as a whole if you are doing that and I do recommend that you do. So that's one way to begin to move it forward Another way, another thing that you can do when you're moving your relationship with your ancestors forward is you can begin to actually ask them for more. You can ask them then for specific guidance related to your life. So it's not recommended to ask your ancestors to directly intervene in your life. Um, you wouldn't ask them for the kind of intervention that you would ask from a saint, for example. You wouldn't ask them to bring you specific opportunities or blessings. You wouldn't ask them to um, rearrange your life for you or to present you with things. What is most beneficial in your relationship with their ancestors is to seek the assistance from them for the growth that you need within yourself so that you can then have the skills needed or take the actions needed to achieve what you're seeking to achieve in your life. That can take on many different forms. You can definitely ask them for insight as in information or messages that's going to assist you with clarity, that's going to assist you with figuring out what actions to take, figuring out um, what steps to take to head in the direction that you need to head, to assist you with solving problems, to assist you with um, reconciling in relationships, to assist you with making things go smooth with other people, for example. You can ask them to send you signs, guidance, and information to direct you towards specific opportunities, show you which job would be the best for us, show, show you which opportunity would be the best for you so on and so forth, but it's more about their guidance within you and within your life than it is asking them for specific things. So you wouldn't ask them, send me a windfall of money, send me um, this person that I want to be in a, in a relationship with, send me a new car. You wouldn't ask them for things like that. You would ask them to assist you with cultivating your finances so that you can attain a new car. You would ask them to send you signs and guidance to show you where you can get the best deal on a new car that is right for you. You would ask them to assist you with um, welcoming love into your life things of this nature. So they're there to help you with your spiritual guidance. They're there to provide you with insight, with messages, with signs, with guidance. And if a specific ancestor presents themselves to you, you do want to make sure that you cultivate that specific relationship. And if more than one specific ancestor presents themselves to you, then it's fine to cultivate a relationship with more than one ancestor. It doesn't mean that any of them are, that they have to exist on a hierarchy. It doesn't mean that some of them need to be above others. Although over time, you will probably find that you have one, maybe two primary ancestors present in your life and that those are the ones that you have the strongest connection with. So you are going to then shift your focus to focus on developing those relationships. Make sure that you address those individuals by name in your prayers. Make sure that you thank them as individuals for all they have done for you and make sure that you specifically ask them what they need from you in order to strengthen, develop, and grow the relationship with them. So you're going to give them more attention, you're going to give them more energy, you're going to address them specifically, and you're gonna focus on one-on-one -on -one relationships, even if it's with more than one individual ancestor. However, you should still be venerating your ancestors as a whole in conjunction with that and side-by-side -side with that. and. 
going hand in hand in all of this, you're going to want to then give them individual offerings. And a lot of people ask, well, if I'm giving individual offerings, then do I still give them offerings as a whole? And the answer is yes. So you will still give offerings to your ancestors as a whole generalized group. And then you will also give individualized offerings to the individual ancestors when it makes sense to do so. For example, if you have a daily practice, then on the daily practice, you may be giving your offerings to the ancestors as a whole, whereas once a week you have selected a day to give offerings specifically to those individual ancestors along with the offerings for the ancestors as a whole. You'll work out a method that works best for you. So stay tuned for video number six, which is our last video in our series on ancestor veneration. Thanks for watching and stay blessed.